Ready to go? I'm always ready, man. Hey, everybody. Steve here. This is Local Level Podcast, and I'm sitting here today with Darren Claprod, a biker dude. Darren is a ad man turned wandering biker food <laughs> enthusiast. I love it. What's up, Steve? <laughs> Not much. We're, uh, we're, we're excited to have you on. I really appreciate you coming out. Thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah. This is my first podcast, man. Oh, man. Well, we're going to make it. We're going to make it great for sure. <laughs> For sure. We got some cool stuff to talk about. Sweet. Um, I mean, you're the first guest of the day here. And I'll tell you what, I called you a wandering biker food enthusiast. Is that yeah. about right? It's very, very true. <laughs> I mean, if I, if, I could tri- if I could get paid to travel the country, I mean, that's the end goal for me. And I mean, there's so many amazing places and I've traveled all over the Midwest, but there's still there's places in Minneapolis that I want to really get on video that I'll probably do over the winter. One of my favorite breakfast places in the entire country is in minneapolis al's breakfast it's a it's Very amazing nice. best pancakes on the planet so you you have you been there already or? oh yeah i used to well i used to go to minneapolis when i worked for condé nast you know i'd okay. entertain clients at night be a little hungover, but I made sure you have to get there at like seven or seven thirty in the morning. It's very narrow, right. and you have to stand behind people like this, like as uh, they're eating their food, <laughs> and the walls right up against your back. But I mean, just the buttermilk pancakes are worth the drive. They're worth the man. wait. They're worth getting up early, hungover. I mean, it's they're they're you're making me hungry. Super man. legit, man. You're making me hungry. All right, well, that's uh that's that's a place we'll definitely want to check out. So it's uh what's it called again? Al's Breakfast in. Uh, Actually, it's in Dinky Town, but the, but it's Minneapolis, uh, the city. Okay, so when are you planning on going out there? You know, I think I, I'm looking at January right now. My schedule is getting booked up into December, but I, I really, even though it's it's a cold time of the year here, yeah, it's even colder there. But they really celebrate the winter season. I mean, they have down uh, downtown festivals. They have things going on all winter long. The the Minneapolis and Minnesota. People are not afraid of the winter, man. I know we're not oh, either, yeah, yeah. but they, I think they celebrate it where we're just like, we're grinding, we're grinding, man, waiting for March. It's like a badge of honor a little bit, you know, <laughs> it that, you is. Can, that you can get through it, um, just like Chicago. But, and they're um, Nordic. They want to ski and they're doing all cross-country skiing. Oh, yeah. They're doing everything. <laughs> they're curling, drinking beer. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, so, you know, I have a bunch of questions. I'm probably not going to stick to them. Cool. But uh where are you coming from right now? I mean, where, where, where have you been since we talked last? Oh, my goodness, man. I'm just all over. Well, the first one that comes to my mind is where I'm going to this afternoon. We're going to Burger Antics out of Brookfield. And I got to say, it's it's one of the best burgers I've ever had. Yeah. And it's one of the best burgers in all of Chicago. Chef Brenna. That's a big claim. And her husband are running an amazing place there. Her Her burgers are just right on and i'm so stoked to go there this afternoon uh to shoot a, a promo video with her and uh her husband dan but they're just such cool people and they were one of the first uh places in the chicagoland area that microphone allowed their them to carry their beer you don't really find microphone unless you have to go to elk Grove village to drink their beer there are spots that, that it's in the city but they were one of the first and uh wow. i was really shocked when i walked in there the first time I was like, you have microphone brewing on tap. And Dan was a real laid back. He's like, yeah, you know, we, you know, we, we know beer and we've always been big fans and we're friends with Mike, the owner and uh, man, it's good. They, and everything else they have on tap was great. Well, you know, I wasn't joking when I said food enthusiast. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, <laughs> it's safe to say you definitely know uh, what you're talking about for the audience. Can you explain a little bit about a biker dude and what it is that you actually do? Well, the first thing is, is I was born hungry, <laughs> you know, so so out of the gates and then my mom and grandma were uh, uh, my grandma's no longer with us, but a Sorry. great cook. Uh, my mom, just an amazing cook. And I learned so much from her, mm-hmm. but not not just how to cook, but how to cook excellent food, because I we only get. One of my things is, is we only get so many meals in this lifetime. Right. And I want true. all of mine to be excellent ones. I, I get really upset. I, it's internally like I don't yeah. express it. Only the best. But if the food and, it, if, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking just about an excellent hot dog. Yeah. You know, uh, going to some people's houses, I'm, I'm already dreading because I know the food's going to be mediocre. So I'm yeah. already thinking in my mind, the, right. the, the I'm already missing a, a good meal here. Like in my, you know, our allot, my allotted meals in this lifetime. Oh, man. 
Uh, so, so you hold yourself to a strict diet because when you're in this uh, this game, you know, going out and yeah. doing the best burgers all day long. I mean, that's got to be pretty tough on the gut a little bit, you know? Yeah. You know, like for, for lunch today was a can of tuna and some pretzels, you know, and an avocado. Mm -hmm. I can't, I mean, I wouldn't feel well, but I mean, that way I, I, I know this afternoon I'm, I'm going to eat fries. I'm going to eat yeah, that. I'm going to eat that stuff. whole burger, bro. <laughs> like to your point, I was, I went there the first time to do the promo shoot for the microphone brewing, uh, a burger throwdown, and I had this plan. I was like, "Dude, you just chowed yesterday. You can't yeah. keep doing like I can't do this seven days a week where I'm just <laughs> eating, you know, yeah. three or four thousand calories and burgers and all of that." So I was like, "I'll just take a couple bites, or I'll eat half of it, so oh, I don't geez. insult them." You know, like yeah. chef, because they would go back and be like, "The dude didn't finish our burger." That's crazy. I took yeah. my first bite, bite, and it was over. Dude. Game over. Yeah. I, I I just housed the whole thing like it was gone, man. I can't imagine, I mean, when you bite into like an awesome anything, mm -hmm. putting it down and knowing it's there and yeah. walking away <laughs> is crazy to me. I can't even imagine. It uh, is, it is, it is. <laughs> it, it takes uh, uh, discipline, but uh, I got into riding motorcycles back in 06. I uh, got let go from Condé Nast. Our, our team got promoted to Vanity Fair and uh, the editor, uh, didn't or the the head editor did not get along with our publisher, so we're all part of that team. And one by one, yeah. we all kind of got let go. And I was just like, you know what? I've always I hate having regrets. Right. And I was I've always wanted to ride. And I was like, that's it. I'm taking the motorcycle class, mm -hmm. and I've never looked back. So I did a two month sabbatical and rode my motorcycle all over the place. But you know, being a food person and so food centric, like I drive my wife insane. Like we're on vacation and we're, we're eating breakfast. I'm already talking about, we're going to go here for lunch. We're going to go here for dinner. Like I got it all planned out. Right. She's like, she's like, D man. She's like, it's breakfast, man. Like, you know, you're talking we're about dinner. I go, I go, I, I go, I know, but you know, I, I'm, I know, I know where we need to go, right. you know? So I tied that in with the writing. Like I would pick a, a food spot. Because usually when you ride with people, the first thing everyone cares about, what's our route? Like, are we going to yeah, ride along the Rock River in Oregon? Are we going to ride out to uh, Savannah and be on the Mississippi? But the second thing everybody cares about is where, where we, we eat and lunch or dinner. Right. Everybody has their own standards and I have my own. So I don't judge what anybody else's tastes are. But I know good food. I know, I know excellent food because I've eaten so much of it all over the place. Mm -hmm. And I found all these spots and I was... I thought to myself, how can I be a conduit or how can I share? Because usually people end up talking to me or I end up talking to them and I'm meeting the manager or the chef. Or if I don't, I ask to meet him. And all of a sudden I'm meeting this such a cool uh, man or woman that's 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 putting, you know, in 14, 15 hours a day because right, yeah. they're passionate about what they're putting out there. The ones that are doing it really well. And I always thought I just I left there and I had so much fun. I want to I want to share the food first of all with people. Yeah, yeah. I want to share the ride, the, that riding experience, and what it what it's like is it's it's so different uh, being on the bike. It's indescribable. So so that was something that I actually I wanted to back up because you said that you um, you know weren't advertising before. Yeah. So yeah. So I, I figure because what you're doing right now uh, it's a it's a passion project, but it also is advertising. Yes. You know. Yeah. So it's you know it's advertising things that you genuinely care about which yeah. is the best advertising when it's genuine and sincere yes you, so, so you know that too because you because you're because <laughs> you're in it too man yeah yeah i mean it's uh when you when you believe in something and it's actual uh sincerity it really translates yeah you know, people can sniff out when you're fake um so i i, I yeah because it helps me when i cold call on these restaurants yeah i'm already a fan but i might i might not have went in there on the bike initially or, or i found out about them through somebody else that i trust their food opinion because I'll ride my motorcycle or go somewhere yeah. under 200 miles if I trust the person giving me the recommendation mm -hmm. to go. But then I'm, I'm reaching out to them on Facebook or whatever it is. And they're like, who's who's a biker dude, man? <laughs> this guy's going to come here and do what? Like, what's he going to do? You know, so, because I'm still growing my, you know, following, but we get good solid views, like one to I know, 10 I saw that. or yeah. 11,000 views. But I, but the, the main thing is, is I'm, I'm sharing, like I've created a roadmap for you, but mm -hmm. back to the sales thing that, that made it easy because if they said no to me, I know eventually, like if it's meant to be, and I'm going right. to kind of just 
keep them posted and I'll wait two months or, and then I'll, yeah. I'll send them something again. Or if it's a video that's related to what they do too, they can see the work and right. it's, I, I won't name some of the names, but there were people that said no to me Always. that were on my whale list. Like, yeah, like even right, when, right. you know, when we were in sales, we had these whales that were like these big accounts. Well, I had a list of certain places that I, that I, no matter what happened, I wanted to shoot a video there because they've treated me amazing or I've been a customer for 18 years and yeah. I'm actually uh, filming at a, a couple of spots and and now they they've said yes to me which i can't which beautiful for me just as a fan of their place like i i have to chill out sometimes because i was <laughs> i was in uh des moines uh last week when you you asked me earlier we were in des moines last week uh, at smoky d's and darren worth he's a 15-time world champion barbecue wow pit master winner and it's it's mind-blowing. So how do you do your research? I mean, you know, there's a million places that do barbecue in every city, you know, I mean, every good city worth going to. Um, so how do you how do you decide where you're going to go next? How do you hear about these places? Yeah. Is it like word of mouth? Do you like watch other people that maybe are kind of influencing you? What? Uh, how, how does that process work? There, there's, there's a lot of avenues. Like I've always, I mean, Gourmet Magazine was always around our house. My mom and grandma read it. Yeah. So I would flip through there and, you know, see, and they would mention restaurants. So I always kind of, even growing up, I had these mental lists. If they do like wow. best burgers or food and wine, like I have, there's places like Hodad's in San Diego. I went there because I had read about it. I think it was in Food and Wine or Bone App or one of the magazines or Thrill List or Eater. And yeah. we went there as a family. We did a hike before. I wasn't out there on the bike. And man, it was they were the coolest people working there. Nice. So that's a place on my list. So that just gives, you know, example. Or if like you, like if, you know, getting to know you. Yeah. If you, if I really felt that you knew food from like a high level, but like a high level for, for burgers and hot dogs and French fries, then I would, if you told me, Darren, Darren, man, I just went to this place. You're going to remember that. Yeah, and countryside and, you know, the best, best omelet I've ever had in my life. So then I'm going there. It's yeah. on my list. Yeah, it makes you sense. You know, so I ask a lot of questions. You know what I do? On, just like we did in sales. Like, so I finished filming with them and we're, we're, we're hanging out, you know, having a beer or whatever with the chef or whatever. Yeah. And I asked them, hey, where is there someone that you think is a good fit for me? Like mm -hmm. you, referrals, you see what we do. Referrals. Yeah. Pretty so much, yeah. so back to the sales thing. Yeah. You know, just like, you know, I saw your uh, podcast with Mike, the owner of uh, Rep's Place. And I just I really like the questions that you asked. Well, I appreciate it. And I just I thought it brought Mike out. And it really like I learned a lot about the restaurant business because one of my next things that I'd like to do is I'd like to do a biker dude burger pop up. Because from doing this for now, it'll be three years at a, at a really serious level and, yeah. a, you know, consistent level. I've learned a lot about the burger prep, the meat, the bun, the cooking method, all those things. Yeah. And now I'm thinking, you know what, that, that'd be so fun for me. Would you, would you bring in like talent or would you try to do it yourself? No, definitely, definitely myself okay. and maybe one or two other people because from doing these burger throwdowns and hosting them and promoting them. Yeah. I know most you got of, something coming up. Yeah, man. Uh, there's all they really come with. If you don't have a food truck, like Greg at Chicago culinary kitchen has an awesome food truck. They come with a 10 by 10 tent, a 36 inch uh, Blackstone griddle, two big propane tanks and a couple big ice chests and they just rock it out. Nice. Like Lodi Tap House, I've, I've, I've always was a huge fan of them. And I got to know Elliot, the co-host, like through responding to their posts and everything. And I actually got to be in the Lodi Tap House video when they won Best Burger for Chicago's Best. Wow. I've actually been on uh, Chicago's Best twice now. My wife nice. and I were on the date night episode for, uh, <laughs> not Halloween, uh, uh, Valentine's Day. Oh, nice. And uh, Elliot was there. And I, I, again, the sales thing. So instead of letting it lie, I had I had for six months straight. I And he actually, I thought it was a cool thing. He apologized to me. I was sending him Facebook messages. I would really like to do an interview with you. Because I love his energy, yeah. I love his sense of humor, and meeting Elliot in person, we met him at a, another shoot. We weren't in it, but it was at one of my favorite barbecue places, South Moon Barbecue, and uh, and he was the nicest guy. He came up, we said hi, and he just talked to my wife and daughter, and I was like, you know what, this is a cool guy. Someday I, I want to interview this guy. So yeah. I just stayed on it. So anyway, fast forward, 
I was like, oh, yeah, no. he's like, yeah. He goes, dude, I'm so sorry I didn't respond to you. He goes, I understand we're going to be coming to Chicago Culinary Kitchen, your wife, and you are going to be in the, the video, some yeah. of the video with us. He goes, why don't we do the interview then? And it was one of my, one of my, so we go there and before anything starts, I see, get to sit down with him and Jason Pallovi, the producer who's not there anymore. Awesome guy. They, they bag on each other so hard. And it was so great to get that on video, but I got them on video saying their top three uh, beef joints in all of Chicago. They said it on camera and their top three hot dog joints. Did they know they were being filmed? Yeah. Oh yeah. So I was like, (laughs) so yeah, I always make sure that's the one thing, like, especially for customers, I always ask them because I've had people just uh, angrily even say, no, I, I will not be on video. Yeah. people. And I'm like, it's so cool. That's cool. Yeah. You you gotta, you gotta, uh, definitely ask what people so i always look out for you (laughs) yeah and um you know that's awesome so like uh tell everybody a little bit about your youtube channel Mm -hmm. your social media how they can find these videos yeah because i was i was watching uh several things that you you've done as a matter of fact we're sitting at rep's place right now yeah um mike uh was was kind enough to let us use the space so thanks mike yep yep absolutely (laughs) uh we'll be back uh, many more times but um I saw your interview with Mike yeah. about the peanut butter burger and I watched several other things, but, um, plug your channel, plug your channel. <laughs> I will. I mean, if, if you, if you are really into food where you take the first bite and, you know, it just blows your mind that that's, yeah. I don't, I don't do, I'm a, I'm a Yelp elite and I'm a Google local guide. Mm-hmm. I don't post reviews unless it's a five-star review. You can down me for that. But I'm not going to say negative things. Right. Same with my YouTube uh, videos and my channel. Every place that you go to, I don't even care if you're the most hardcore critic. You're going to find something or whatever I recommend and you're going to dig it. Yeah. So I've created a whole roadmap for you, mainly in the Chicagoland area, but up into Wisconsin, um, uh, Michigan as well, like the Ann Arbor area. And any place I have no... No qualms whatsoever. If you go to any of those spots I've put on there in a video, yeah, you stand by them. You're good. They're gonna they're gonna blow your mind. Whether it's a burger or steak, yeah. uh, their French fries, whatever it is. So I even tell you what you should order. Like we ha- we highlight the top two or three or four things that they're creating because there's a lot of amazing restaurants, but it's really hard to do twelve to twenty things like through the roof. Yeah. So I've tried to, I've done the homework. So you're getting the through what I experience as through the roof and flavor execution, everything. People are going to hate this uh, because it's, it's a contested thing, but let me get your top three beefs. Oh, my top three beefs. I mean, my number one, and I still love it used to be the original Johnny's on, on six on North Avenue, but I went to, to Bobbo's and it's been there for over 35 years. He also owns uh, rich, Cones uh, ran Red Hots, which is another place for hot dogs. But I went to Babos and the care that he put into the beef, I got to go. That's, Where is Babos? See, this is what I love. It's in uh, the northwest side of Chicago. Okay. And I can't think of the street right now, but if you bring it up, people like that grew up in the neighborhood still talk about it. They still go there. He has customers that have been there every day for the last 35 years. Right. And I got to meet some of those people. But I love going to the back of the bus and seeing what they're doing in the back of the kitchen. It's another reason why I did this because when I'd be on the bike, I would, I would want to go back there, Yeah. but shooting videos has given me that entree to go in the back because they let you back there. Right. Now they do tell me like we're sensitive to that too. Some, there's some secrets that we can't, yeah, you know, put yeah. on there, People but off like camera, I can, I, it's fine to tell you what they're doing. We just can't have it on camera because yeah. the beef, world the hot dog it's suit and french fry very competitive oh yeah and they all put a lot of effort into it but babos they did a what they even put like this garlic water that they poured over it it was like <laughs> it was like this blanket man of but i was just like mesmerized like watching him do it and then my cameraman george did it all in slow motion with this music behind it <laughs> it was kind of kind of funky you know but i but that's that's really how an example of how i see food yeah. And so like an edible art form. And and so that was only one one of the cool things he did. And I had to ask him, I go, is it OK that we share this? Because you don't get to see what's in the spice bundle that he puts in there. Right. You just right. get to see what he you know pours over it. But they did something. A combo hot is my favorite thing, not just a beef. Oh, I yeah, like yeah. the sausage in there, yeah, yeah, yeah. the hot oh. sausage with hot jar in there. So I get a combo dipped 
or it's so funny, like dip, juicy. They all have their own, their own yeah, lingo, right, man. Right, right. You know, and and, and it's Johnny's over here. They correct you at Johnny's if you don't say it in their lingo. Like if, if, if you don't say juicy, they they correct you, you know, because oh, okay. some people you're used to saying dipped. dipped. Yeah, that's what yeah. I usually say. You want that. double dipped or like whatever, you know, so. But they took what they did is they took the Italian sausage and dipped it three times in the gravy. Wow. Before it even went in, into the bun. And I was like, you know what? They're, that gravy was just. Yeah. I mean, I got goosebumps just thinking about it. <laughs> You know, yeah, you I'm not, I'm not kidding, yeah. man. <laughs> you really do. That's, that's the effect of so really funny. good food. But so, yeah. so that's to me and I, and the, my daughter has a very discerning palate. Yeah. Both of, and both of my sons do too, but she has this amazing food memory. So I, I brought these, so granted that these are leftovers I brought home. Yeah. Reheated right. on the stove. They freaked out. Wow. They, they, to this day, they still talk about it. And my uh, daughter needles me like, when are we going back to Babo's? But number two is definitely Johnny's Beef on North Avenue. And then uh, from my heart is uh, Jay's on Nagel. Jay's on Nagel. Yes. Yes. Their uh, Jardin Air is like. I used to go there all the time. Nice went crunch. To Ta uh, Taft and Wilbur Wright. Oh, no way. That's right so cool. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, so that's those know. would be my top three for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I love Jay's Beef. I just don't get over in that particular part of the city yeah, that hard. often. It's, yeah. You yeah, know, we used to, to live over that place. way. And my wife's from the Northwest side. So that was our place. Yeah. You know, I think Portillo's is great, but it's, they're not on this. These places are up here. Yeah, it's, Portillo's is day in, day out consistent, but I don't think in my mind, Hey man, and this isn't a down on Portillo's, but I'm not jumping in my car. My family feels different though. Like yeah. my wife and daughter love Portillo's. Yeah. I I'm looking for the, like they're cool. Sometimes they're cool with this. We're like, I'm, I'm only cool with this. See the thing, but the it's, thing it's is for beef though. Why? I'll go an extra 10 miles because I, I want, I want this experience. Right. I think that, um, a lot of times, especially with the beef, you know, it's like, you know what you're going to get when you go to Porto. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's the thing. Like, you know, somebody that isn't all constantly going to a different place because everybody's had an experience that, that is in the Chicago area that, you know, <laughs> yeah. has, likes beefs and where they go to a place, they get a beef and it's trash, Yeah. you know, and that's just so yes. heartbreaking, yes. you know? Um, so, so it's like, you know, Portillo's, you know, consistently that it's going to be the same thing. So that's probably why people will fight you to the death on this subject. So I know, I mean, they do a really solid dog. If I had to pick the one thing, there's two things that I really dig there is their, their crinkle cut fries, I think are outstanding yeah. and their, their chocolate cake. Yeah. Like, Have you ever had a cake shake? No, but my, my <laughs> older son did and he couldn't move for like two hours because yeah. he'd eaten everything else and then topped it off with it's that. Like, it's like uh, it's like chocolate cement. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the flavor's got to be insane. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I eat so much though, man. I can't gut bomb myself like that. You yeah. Know? Yo, I'm going to have to try it. Exactly what it is. You got to try it. Though. I got to try, try it. it. I will. I will get try a small. it. I will get, get a small. small and try it. Yeah. yeah That'll be the only it. thing I eat there then. Yeah. Maybe a couple fries. Yeah. The fries are good too. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the beef thing in Chicago, see, we're spoiled because you go somewhere else, they don't even know what that is, what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, tell you me. You go to a beef, like, and like they say Chicago, I, I don't even order something like that on the menu if I go if to another Chicago state. Style, oh, dude, because I've, I've watched, like I've watched people order it and I see it come out and I'm like, I see it go by <laughs> me and I'm like, that is not, that is not, that is uh, not a beef sandwich, man. Yeah. The meat looks really weird. And the bun that they're using, and then they got like the au jus, like that. I go and something that resembles Jardiner, but it's not. Like right. they got they got weird stuff in there. Cut up jalapenos. Yeah, yeah, I'm not doing yeah. it, man. Yeah, I, I just like I said, I only get those so many meals, so I'm not wasting them, you know. Yeah, absolutely. but here's how far out I think about food. So I woke up early this morning. I was so excited about doing the podcast. Mm -hmm. We're also doing a a whole hog throwdown with one of the top pitmasters in the country at the Emerald Isle. On the 16th, so Isle, uh, Chicago on the north, north northwest side in Edison northwest Park. Highway. Yep, yep. 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 That's, so it used to be my go-to place. Uh, so it's going to be a bash, dude. You should come to it. I mean, it's going to be four amazing pit masters, only one winner, but we will do a people's choice winner. Uh, it's just going to be a lot of fun. But uh, Steamboat just took third place in Memphis in May, which is the world's largest uh, uh, barbecue competition. It's in the world yeah. and they took it in whole hog and he's just, he's an amazing pit master. He's laid back, cool guy, hardworking guy. 
And I'm really excited that he wanted to do it, but I'm just as excited about everybody else. But it's really cool to have that level of a, of a competitor that's won. I mean, I think the title was, as, or the trophy was as tall as he was. Wow. But my point was, is so I'm laying there thinking, Tony's Deli is just down the street from them. Yeah, it is. There's a team coming up from Memphis. I, I really want them to just, dude, I wish they made a cologne out of they an Italian deli, deep, dude, though. that smell. I want a cologne out of it, dude. You can, you know, they got the juice, man. <laughs> You know, you could rub it on you if you want it. Yeah. You know, so I want them to experience that when you first walk into an Italian deli. Yeah. The sights and oh, the yeah. smells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then get that one of their sub sandwiches or whatever you want uh, to order. Yeah. Or even just some uh, thin sliced imported prosciutto. Or some fresh you, olives. Yeah. You know, oh, I love. I always order the olives, man. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, that's that's the place. You're, you're so I'm going to be about- like, dude, a block and a half. I know you guys, a lot of these pit masters, of course, they eat their food, yeah. but they want to eat different things, burgers, whatever. Yeah. Walk down the street, man. Don't leave this because they got to be there. They got to set up on Friday the 15th. The competition's on the 16th. I was like, you guys got to walk that block and a half and get that. Walk into Tony's Deli. Well, I'm I'm spoiled because I actually worked a block from there. Oh, for you did? Oh, dude. I used to go to Tony's for lunch every once yeah. all the time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's great. It's a small world. The daughters um, that work there are always so serious. <laughs> well, they, they, uh, they, they have a lot of people, a lot of traffic yeah. in there. They yeah. take it serious for sure. Yeah. yeah. But nice people, good people. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so yeah, I mean, it's pretty safe to say that you're, you know, you know, your stuff, man. I mean, so do you brother? Yeah. Well, I mean, I live, I'm, I'm from Chicago, you know, I mean, yeah. I, I know the, the foods, uh, I mean, I know people from Chicago, though, and they don't they don't really. Well, you're talking about my neighborhood. So it's uh, like, you know, you're really talking about my neighborhood. Sweet. Yeah. So that's awesome. Um, you know, and uh, so so tell me, like, uh, you know, would you consider yourself a food critic? Uh, yeah, but I don't I'm not going to post. You don't do because my reviews. my mom and grandma were in the restaurant business. So I mm-hmm. that's where my love I love going to the kitchen because I even love the smell of the dishwasher mixing with the oil or whatever's cooking because it brings back those childhood memories and just seeing how hard they work and the effort. uh, I don't like it when people post, I'm not going to say anything negative. Everybody has a bad day. Yeah. Like say, say if I came here and, but Mike would never allow it, but I'm just using an example, you know, where a server had a bad day and she kind of put that back on you. I'm not going to go on Yelp and write a bad review. Yeah. I'm going to come back in and give them another chance. Well, if we were, it's if it's two for two bad, I'm probably just not going to come back, but I'm not going to say anything negative. So I'm a food critic like, on a level that I know really good food. And if you ask me, I'm not going to steer you wrong. Yeah. Well, that's, that's fair. That's fair. I yeah. put, I'm very highly critical. I'm critical of myself when I'm making a meal. Well, you also do your due diligence before you go. So yeah. that, that probably plays a big part. So I wanted to actually touch on Yelp uh, a little bit because, you know, I'm in marketing and, you know, I deal with small businesses all the time, restaurants, all different types of businesses. And, you know, for a restaurant, it's really important uh, to have a presence on Yelp Mm -hmm. and it can make or break you depending on, you know, your customer base. I know. Could be people that walk in that are having a bad day themselves. I know. Um, So and that can really, really hurt you um, as a small business when you're starting out. Um, so what are your thoughts on Yelp, uh, in particular, as far as the way people go on there and, you know, leave, uh, bad reviews and just, they don't really think about the consequences behind it. And then, uh, another thing that happens, cause you know, in all honesty, I tell my customers to stay away from Yelp if they're not in the restaurant business, because there's more downsides mm-hmm. because, you know, uh, people don't leave positive reviews unless something's bad. I mean, for every for every negative review, there's a thousand positive reviews that they didn't leave. You know, yeah. happy no, you're right. Don't think about it. Yeah, it's the negative that always stands point. out. So, you know, that platform in particular to me, it seems like it's it's just kind of biased. It's it's just slanted. You know, so so mm-hmm. what are your thoughts on that? How can how can that be maybe improved? Well, I mean, like I said before, I'm I've always been a fan of Yelp. I remember my two brother in laws. I don't even think they had heard of Yelp. This was like yeah. seven or eight years ago. And we were on our way to a buddy guy co- concert and uh, we're a huge fan of Paterno's pizza okay. in uh, Jefferson Park. And so we're eating pizza and they're like, I was like, yeah, I checked this out on Yelp. They busted out laughing. They're like, what, the, what is Yelp, man? <laughs> like, you know, like they were kind of like, maybe they, maybe they had heard of it. Cause they were, I think now thinking back, they were kind of downing it a little bit. Yeah. 
and it was funny, man. I was laughing too. I have with a name like Claprod, you can imagine what school was like for me. Ugh. Like first grade when the teacher announces all the names. I laughed too, man. Because <laughs> she would just butcher it, you know, and I was just it taught me to oh, laugh at man. myself. Yeah. But I never just like Facebook and so I never bought into the 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 light and the full light and the darkness. You know, yeah. so if the, if I the only thing that that I will notice on Yelp, and this is just me sharing something personally. If a place has two stars, I'm going to go down. I'm going to, I'm going to delve deeper down there and just yeah. see. Well, that's, so you. if it's an overall, you know, that if it's a, for me, for food, I've had food poisoning. I've had, yeah. uh, again, like we talked about, I'm not wasting meals. So I use it as a research tool, but I don't buy into it a hundred percent. That's the thing. You know so what I mean? I can I, I take. I know what you mean. Yeah. I yeah. use that like as a metric. So, but then I'm going to go on Google too. For and me. And see though, what they say. Google's a little more positive. People yeah. seem to be more positive. And the, the people in the generation prior to me, a lot of them are using Google exclusively. Yeah. Google's just, it's, you know, it's, it's there. So I, I mean, like, I like Yelp. So. I use, I use, I probably use Yelp uh, two or three times a day. Like I okay. just want to, I use it as a research tool. But I'm not listening. The negativity, I tend to drown it out unless the person writing it really knows what they're talking about. But if that's the only one that's real negative that brings someone down to yeah, three and a half stars, that's, that's, then, I, then, I, then I take them mentally, I take that out. It's for me, though, you know, even knowing that, uh, the, you know, kind of the way that it is where people will be vocal when they're negative. So there's all these other extra ones that aren't there. When you see a two star review for something. Yeah even though you know that in the back of your head, it mm -hmm. still is kind of like a, um, you know, it, it just, it's, it, it, it's in the back of your brain. Like, Oh, uh, it's powerful. Yeah. It's very powerful. Yeah. Like you, it's off putting, you know, no matter what. So it's like a lot of times you don't have time to go and just read, you know, 40 reviews down, you know? So it's like those people <laughs> yeah. could, could have had, uh, uh, just a bad day or something like that. And you know, that kind of, some people are just jerks. Yeah. It's like if someone tells me about someone that I haven't met him yet and they're like, this guy's a jerk, yeah. but I meet him and he's, and we're, we're hitting it off. We're, it's, it's a blast. Mm -hmm. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, so-and-so said this guy's a jerk. So I'm waiting for the, right. the jerk to appear, you know? Like, yeah. And that's kind of like what you were saying earlier about Yelp. So you're waiting, instead of going in fully open-minded, you're, you're, you're already like, your guard's already up, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's power. It's a powerful medium. The social media some businesses culture. hate yeah. it though. I, yeah. I won't name any names, but I know some of you out there like don't have the love. But I'm not going to name your name. But it's it's upsetting though sometimes because you, when you when you actually deal with a place and and you know the owner for instance, yes, and they're not getting really good reviews, but you know that they're doing a good job. I know, you know, that's especially the, when a lot of people don't leave reviews, like, and there's only just a few. Uh, that's so, I look at so that wrong. too. Yeah. I'm sorry to say, but I, I do. It's, it's so if I see, so if I see five stars or four stars, but there's 18 reviews or 20 reviews, it doesn't, and yeah. nobody, none of my food friends have said anything about this place. It's not really going to be like at the top of my. I'm just being yeah. honest, you know. Yeah. yeah, it's just it is a tool for me, but I'm trying for sometimes for me, I need something to. But then I then I back it off of Google. So how you know what you, I mean? Yeah. So if I go to Google. And it's four or four and a half and Yelp's three and a half. I know that Yelp, a lot of people just spew garbage on their negative stuff. So then I'm going, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? So let me, okay. So, so if you told me gears. about a place, but I looked on there, like say, say you tell me about a place, yeah. you know what I'm doing when I leave here before I go eat there, Research. I'm, I'm, I'm researching. So, okay. So, um, in your, opinion, I don't just blindly go to a place. It's very rare yeah. for me. I, I will like, if a, if a tamale truck, like say I'm in Austin, Texas, this happened to my wife and I, we were going to the Hamilton pools and on the way there, I was like, man, there's like 25 pickup trucks outside of this trailer. Mm -hmm. So mentally I'm like, I want to see turnover because yeah. I know the food business. I want sure. freshness. So man, we stopped. That's not a place I would have typically stopped. If there was one pickup truck, yeah. I wouldn't have stopped there. There was still 20 pickup trucks. We went in there. There were some of the best. We still talk about those tamales. Yeah. So yeah. sometimes you got to just little places. Sometimes man. you got to yeah. just go for it, you know, because yeah. you'll miss out on experiences. That's very true. Yeah. It's the hole in the wall, the greasy spoon. A lot of times <laughs> that, that surprises you. Um, so the question that I had for you was, uh, you know, after doing this, the food is one thing. You know, if you can make really great food, mm -hmm. that's a big part of it. Huge. But the other parts of it, you know, the the 
the service, um, you know, the, the feeling that you get, the atmosphere, mm -hmm. you know, um, the, the types of people that, that are around, the characters sitting at the tools, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, man. What are, what are those qualities that really make a five-star joint? I, you know, the, it's, it's wild and, it, and I've, I've only been a customer here for uh, eight, eight months, but reps place, like you walk, you walk in and you get treated great. The food, and I got to see it firsthand, the effort that Mike and his chefs put into the food back there, mm -hmm. uh, starting from not just the finished product, but from, you know, the, the ground meat and whatever it is. But my overall experience, like the people are happy to be in here and yeah. it does something to the the food. Like it's almost like in the walls, like there's another place that I, the uh, Zingerman's calls it a, the, a third place. Like you have, like your home is your number one place. Your work yeah. is always, cause you're working there is like your second place, but where's your third place? And Ref's right. place is a third place. People, I see people walk in at three. Like I see people walk in at eight. If I've been in here, like yeah. at eight and they're all really happy to be here. And the service is re really good day in and day out, but they just want to hang out here and they know, they know people from the neighborhood around here. So they're all talking to each other. So this is a neighbor. Rolling Meadows hasn't had a place like this for years and years. Yeah. You know, Arlington Heights has them, but Rolling Meadows didn't have their third place. And I think reps, he did his research, but he's, but he's delivered on that research. I couldn't agree more. So and it's not so, even a biased thing. Yeah. I mean, it really is. And I, I, I really believe it. Like where I, I'm not in a hurry to leave. Yeah. Like we'll finish our meal and I'll have another drink. Yeah. Or we'll sit, if we're sitting outside, I, I, yeah, it's a parking lot, but I, but I'm still part of what's going on in there. And another place, uh, Rick Benny's, the two brothers running that I walk in and I, the smell I love anyway, because my, my wife is part Italian and takes you like back. the neck bones, you know, the sauce yeah. when you walked into her nani's place, it's just, it evokes like so much, well, so many smell, powerful memories. The most powerful. Of the oh man. Someone asked, I think my daughter asked me, she's like, what would be your favorite cooking smell? And I said, uh, neck bones cooking in the, in the pot with wow. the onions and garlic. It's just, I, cause I know what's going to come at the end of the day, <laughs> the smell, <laughs> but I also know it's always about the eating brother. Yeah. You yeah. know, but, uh, Rick and Benny's man, I walk in and I just, my shoulders do this and there's politicians, there's police officers, there's local people, there's the two brothers, but that breaded steak sandwich mm -hmm. is lights out, man. Like <laughs> if I could send anybody anywhere, I have a, like a list of places, it's probably five to 10 joints. Rick Benny's is up there because not only that, I got my mind, I love getting my mind blown. So they're like, have you ever tried our chicken Vesuvio sandwich? So chicken Vesuvio, you're thinking of the, the wedge, the wedge potatoes, you know, with a little bit of lemon on it, the couple pieces of dark meat chicken and the peas, yeah. you know, and a little bit of the, the sauce on there thinking this is like to myself, but I'm going to ride with it, you know, and they bring it out, man. And I, this was before I got to go in the kitchen and see it made. It's, it's so paper thin wow. and it's just on a Toronto roll, but it's dipped in garlic butter. The whole breaded chicken is dipped. See, I'm goosebumps again, breaded. And they just put it on there with the special mayo, a little bit of lettuce, man. I, I got to tell you, it's right up there with that. And that breaded steak sandwich is historic, but it's, it's up there. I, when I left there, I was telling everybody about it. You're killing me, man. This is the first interview. I, gotta I, say I would right say now. go there right now. Like after you <laughs> left this today. That you have, that is a destination just the just to walk in there is a destination for me. So we're going to do a video on that. They do a breaded steak pizza. So you know how messy the breaded steak sandwich is. It's it's got marinara sauce. And I love simple. That's another thing. I, a true chef or a true cook, because not everyone that has these restaurants is a is a chef. Yeah, right, they're right. a cook. They're a cook. And in their heart, a lot of most chefs are are cooks, yeah. like the things that they make for themselves at home. So this has minimal ingredients and it's just was, mind blowing. That was a question that I had. Simple I, things done well, man. I agree. So the perfect steak is cooked how? And then, Medium rare is always, right. man. Okay. That's the standard bearer. Yeah. And then, and then what do you put on a steak? Nothing. I salt and pepper is it for me. There you go. I won't put anything else on a steak. I want fresh. You want to taste the meat. Yeah. And I want uh, bigger crystals of salt on there because I think people don't, uh, before they do their steak, however they're going to cook it, they don't, they don't salt it enough. I've been, re I read a salt. I read a lot of books. I try to read a couple chapters to, today of any 
of, of any book, but what I'm reading right now is Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss. And it was weird. I read it from cover to cover a year ago. A year ago, th- different things were applicable to me, and now different things are. Yeah. So You're it was why I was thing. just like, I had this light bulb moment. So I'm I'm posting these videos every day on Facebook and Instagram, mm-hmm. but I'm only doing one video a week on YouTube. So tell me about the video process, because you know we've been talking a lot about the food, but but wait, breaded steak pizza. You would think it was messy, but it's dude, it's it's lights out. So. If you have never been to Rick and Benny's, you got to you, you just bring all the leftovers home. You got to get the uh, breaded steak sandwich first. Just cut a quarter off or a half. You might, you, but don't get the king, man. It's like four pounds, four and a half pounds. Get <laughs> oh, that wow. chicken Vesuvio, dude. You cannot leave there without I'm that. Gonna, I'm going to. And then, and then, then the, the breaded places. steak pizza. Yeah. Rick and Benny's, though. Said, like, I take Because I know you're a Chicago dude. Like, yeah. you, you have to go there. And it's in uh they got a parking lot right across the street. The Chicago police watch it. There's no problems and it's free parking. Yeah. Uh, it's right on the edge of Br- Bridgeport there. Okay. And it's, it's just, I love it. I can't wait to go back there. Well, and the two I, brothers are the coolest, coolest cats. You're the way you describe it. It's, it's safe to say that you, uh, you, you, you know, your, your stuff and you, you believe in it. Uh, I take your word for it. Definitely. And gotta I go, check it out. gotta go Steve. Uh, for sure. And, um, so what I, what I wanted to get in because, you know, we've been talking about food and I know that we can go for hours and hours. Doing yeah, that. dude, I can uh, tell <laughs> me too. Dude. So, um, uh, what I wanted to talk about was a little bit more about, um, what you, you know, what you're doing, you know, as far as doing these videos and doing promotion, because, mm-hmm. you know, when we talked, you said that you, you, putting together the experience with the advertising and, you know, the passion for what you're Mm -hmm. doing with writing Mm -hmm. um, and food, putting it all together, Mm -hmm. you know, that's great. And you love it. And I'm sure you would do it for free, you know, but you're, you're also trying to make something um, valuable that you can provide a service. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the service that you provide for somebody that might be listening in the area. Um, What is it exactly that you're providing? Well, it's it's kind of a, an extension of what I've seen over the last two and a half years of going in. I mean, these business owners have they have their employees, they have, you know, whatever their food delivery, they have their beer and alcohol delivery. They have all these things going on. They're writing checks. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've seen a lot of them do a great job at taking a still of their amazing burger. The Loyalist, uh, that's another place you got to go to in the city on Ada and Randolph. Uh, fantastic place things just pop into my brain, but they, I was thinking about the shots that they take there. It makes me hungry when I look at it, yeah. but guess what? They don't ever do any videos. Like I, I want to see, why don't you go b- take your phone? You don't even need a, you know, great cameras are amazing. I know you have one. My cameraman has one too, but like an iPhone XR or the new, the new uh, iPhone, they shoot amazing video yeah, they do. from day to day. Yeah. And you have a good, like I have a little good uh, shotgun mic. Mm-hmm. The owner, all the owner has to do. So I'm talking 30 seconds. Hey, you go back there. Hey, chef, uh, I want to get a shot of of the Malliard effect of the burger where it's brown. You know, it's browning like you're getting the caramelization. Yeah. There's your 30 second video. You posted a still that day. The afternoon, you sit down, takes one minute. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. You post that. So what I do for people is I go in one day a week. I shoot five videos. I clean them up. I don't do an intro or anything like that. It's just something that you can just pop on social media and I right. create a, a shared Google Drive folder. They can use it whenever they want. But if I really fall in love with the little shorty vid, put it out I'll your, put it on mine and promote it. So for for 20 videos, shorty vids, a minute or under, some of them go longer. Like I was just at Twisty's cycle and uh, some of the vids went longer. So I had to edit them down or I won't do them on Instagram. Mm-hmm. But uh, there, I usually try to, I'm usually better at that, but I was interested in what they're saying. So I let the video go longer, That's okay. you know, That's instead great. of g- yeah. giving them the cutoff. But so, yeah, so you get 20 vids for 500 bucks. So you're talking about 20 minutes, basically, yeah. of, of footage split up in something that you can release over time. Yeah. And also some shout outs. And, and I'm and I'm releasing some of them, too, and tagging them and tagging, like, say, an example would be County Line Customs. He has a, in Maple Park, Illinois, such a great guy, Ray Lynch Jr. He's so fun. And when I met him, I was like, I dig this. He was like the mayor. He knows everyone in yeah, town. Right, right. And Lodi Tap House is in Maple Park. So that's how we met. He was eating there and I came in on my bike. It's one of my favorite stops on the bike. It's about an hour and a half away yeah. or a little over an hour. 
and we met and he was he became my first customer i had nice. i shot last week we were we both were laughing so hard we got some really cool stuff that's coming out but uh he takes really cool stills but he didn't even have an instagram mm -hmm. he shoots no video so he has his normal shop but what i was getting to he has another shop that he does cars that have been featured at Pebble Beach Concourse to Elegance mm -hmm. at Barrett Jackson in, in Scottsdale, Arizona. He's got a, I saw a truck we shot of a 49 Chevy, the guy just in the paint and a tiny bit of body work, $77,000. So he's got a custom shop. So we shoot both because it's fun to get the customers that come in that make yeah. the normal auto shop or body shop and collision. But man, the stuff he's got going on in that custom shop, I was, it's just for it me, off. like, yeah, it's like but no videos. Shop. Yeah. He was doing no video. So now gradually I got him to do an Instagram account too, but he's only done five posts. So the, so we had uh dinner and I, I, I said, give me your phone, man. Like, yeah. let me see. You got five posts. I go, we're posting one right now, dude. Yeah. And, and the internet was, wasn't good in there. So we signed on to Lodi taps internet and he got another post on there. Right. I go every day, every day, man, at least five yeah. days a week. So you can take the videos I shoot. You can do whatever you want with them. But man, you, that's a free medium. Like, so why would you not be, if I was, if, so if when I have my burger pop up one day, one, once a day, a still once a day, uh, a 30 second vid and once a day, probably a vid of a customer that pulls up in a cool truck yeah. or whatever, if they're my loyal every day, like that's three. So I'm telling you, that's probably seven, eight minutes of work that I'll have to do for my, for right. like, th that's my own business. But, but these are all free channels. Twitter's free too. Yeah. I don't use Twitter as much, but Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, it, it's unbelievable. And what you I can use, even use LinkedIn if you want, if yeah. it's a high quality yeah. thing that's promoting a business or your business. Well, so what I can say from, it's, from it's free, man. experience and doing something a little similar, um, is the fact that people that are doing their thing, whatever that thing is, um, you know, a lot of people aren't active on social media because they're busy doing their, their thing. Um, and they also, a lot of times don't feel like what they're doing is interesting. Oh man. People I know. don't You're think right. that it's interesting what they do every day when in reality it really is, <laughs> you know, and, and because everybody wants to see behind the scenes. I do. It is exactly. And you know, the, the, your customers, you know, would, would engage with that stuff. And you would, you know, they would tell, it would be like, check this out. This yeah. is interesting. And that, that's how it grows. So, you know, a lot of times what it takes for somebody um, is to hire somebody like you, mm -hmm. you know, if you have a business, you know, you don't have time to do that stuff. You don't know, you know, hire a professional. Now, what I tell people all the time is there are people that know how to do this better than you. Yes. So hire those people yes. and, and hire somebody smarter than you. <laughs> You know, that's right. and that, that's, that's right. the thing. So, so if you have something that you want to promote, hire somebody that's smarter than you to do it for yeah, you. Yeah, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. So, yeah, I mean, uh, we can sit here forever and I'll definitely have you back. No, thank um, you for allowing me to say that because it was a pat. It was like a discovery. It was like not just one. I was like one after another, one after another. Yeah. You know, and I realized that's why they were cool. Most people are cool with me coming in because they are savvy enough to realize it's a promotion. I'm not charging them for the initial right. video that I bring George in. I'm paying for George out of my pocket. Yeah. But you, I either want to educate them. So eventually they're doing it on their own or I'll, they'll just keep being a customer of mine. Uh, Ray Lynch Jr. said, Darren, he goes, I had so much fun today. You made me realize I really do enjoy what I do for a People living. People don't, yeah. But, I mean, we were, other we were almost pissing our pants. We were at some, on some of the videos where he was doing burnouts in like his car that he calls Lucky. Nice. You know, and he, you know what made me think of the video? Cause earlier in the day, it was a stressful week and he went out, uh, they, the, uh, Terry who manages the office told me that he was doing burnouts to like relieve <laughs> some stress. I was like, he, cause he, he gets, they get distracted. We were almost not going to shoot any videos that day. I was like, you know what? Let's just get three videos today. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, dude, we got to, we got to do the burnout. So then we did the burnout and then I got him talking about the whole mm -hmm. car. So that's what it takes. I, it's it takes, really cool. Yeah. People, but I was up. having just as much fun. Like that's the other thing I didn't bring up, man. I am, I am a fan. Like when I was talking about Smokey D's, George, my cameraman, he goes, dude, you're, you're fan crushing on the other Darren right now. The pit master, you got to like, <laughs> yeah. he's like, you got to bring it down. Bring brother. It down a little bit. Cause I was just like, Oh dude, <laughs> just cheese. And he's like, dude, yeah. you gotta like, <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. He's like, no, you gotta, he's yeah. like, you gotta stay focused here, man. That's awesome. Though. Cause he had trophies everywhere it's from the praise passion. to Lord. It's yeah. the raw passion. That's what people want to see. So, you know, for anybody that's interested in any part of what we just talked about, yeah. check them out. How can yeah. people get a hold of you? Uh, they, I have a fa- my personal Facebook page is Darren Claprod. I post on everything. And then I have, uh, it's, I had to use the biker dude for my biker dude, Facebook. My YouTube is a biker dude and my Instagram is a biker dude. Okay. So check them out. So yeah, if you like amazing food and you want someone to do the homework for you better than Yelp and Google, subscribe to a biker dude. Absolutely. We'll put the links down below. Darren, it's a pleasure to have you on. It was awesome, I really appreciate brother. it. <laughs> Thanks yep. for having me, man. We'll be talking again soon. Awesome.